is a more sophisticated type of Vauxhall Vivaro van. This third generation version's PSA Group Engineering allows this mid-sized model to take a big step forward in technology while still delivering the practicality and value that loyal buyers like. All looked after by one of the largest and most experienced dealer networks in the business. This Vivaro is usefully more agile in this third generation, guys, primarily thanks to the lighter, stiffer EMP2 platform that Vauxhall's switch to PSA Group ownership has dictated it must have. Uh, there's a nimble feeling through the turns that this van just didn't have before, and that's helped by a lower center of gravity and steering that, uh, although it's not especially feelsome, does respond more quickly to inputs. Uh, there's a choice of two main diesel engines, a 1.5 litre unit offered with either 100 or 120 PS and the 2 litre power plant that we'd recommend and that's available with either 120, 150 or 180 PS. We're trying the most powerful model here which has to be had with an 8 speed automatic transmission and our Vauxhall offers that as an option on the 120 PS 2 litre diesel. Otherwise you'll be using a 6 speed manual. An all electric powertrain has also been developed for this third generation model. Refinement has taken a big step forward with this Mark III design, as has ride quality thanks to load sensitive shock absorbers and a so-called passive suspension system which uh, adjusts springing and damping as required depending on the road surface. Plus this model feels quite manoeuvrable. Testers who had found the sheer size of some of the other mid-sized LCVs in this segment a little daunting when they were dealing with narrow country lanes and when they were squeezing through gaps in the traffic were we found much more easily able to acclimatize to a Vivaro. The bonnet is set quite high, but the nose has a squared off shape, which we found during our testing program, uh, really does make this Vauxhall easy to place in tight urban situations. This third generation Vivaro design is shorter, narrower, and to most eyes, generally more visually appealing than its predecessor, which had a beaky, rather awkward front styling. And we mentioned that the Mark III design had shrunk slightly. Let's get specific. Uh, this standard L1 body shape measures in at 4,959 millimeters, 39 millimeters shorter than before, while the alternative L2 body style measures 5,309 mils. That's 89 millimeters shorter than the previous design. Uh, the greater reduction in length with the L2, that's down to the fact that longer Vivaro models now no longer have a lengthier wheelbase. All the designers have done this time around on the L2 is to add on a bit of extra overhang behind that rear axle. And on the subject of practicality, it is disappointing to note that there's no high roof option this time around, although the standard models are slightly taller, uh, and that's what allows this third generation design to offer slightly higher cubic capacity load space figures. Let's take a seat in the cab. Now, if you're switching into this third generation Vivaro from the old Mark II version, uh, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that the seating position here is slightly lower, which does make it more car-like, uh, but uh, rather less commanding. Interior design and perceived quality have taken a big step forward though. Before, you simply couldn't have created a pricey large MPV out of this Vauxhall van. This time around, it's been no problem for the brand to do exactly that. Fitted as standard is the dual front passenger bench that most users will want. Although when we've tried this three abreast, we've noticed that the seat base is slightly narrower than it was on the old model. Uh, so there's less shoulder room and uh, uh, there's a bit more squashing up as a result. Avoid the base addition and design trim levels and as standard, this bench comes in so-called flex cargo configurable form. Now that enables it to be raised to accommodate bulky items pushed through a provided hatch from the cargo area. Or if you want to use your Vivero as a mobile office, then the backrest of the middle seat can be folded forward. Uh, there's an elasticated strap here which can uh, secure your paperwork. And if you pull on the left-hand side of the backrest top, you'll find that it swivels round into an ideal position for a laptop or a tablet. So you can stop off between deliveries to check up on your emails. Alternatively, uh, the middle part of the seat base can be raised to reveal a useful stowage area that's big enough for a pack of six half litre bottles, maybe your work boots and a hard hat, or perhaps valuable items that you want to keep out of sight. 
And finally, the left uh, side of the passenger bench, the far left side over there, can be raised to create a much larger storage area for our items of cargo that you might want to transport in the cab rather than in the cargo area. Another key cabin feature is this centrally positioned 7-inch centre dash colour touchscreen and that's fitted as standard to all but the very cheapest variants. Uh, as well as a DAB tuner and Bluetooth, it includes a mirror screen feature uh, so you can duplicate your smartphone's display onto the monitor via either the Apple CarPlay or the MirrorLink Android Auto systems. From launch, the Vivaro price list saw this model pitched in the 23 to 31,000 pound bracket, excluding VAT. That's for panel van ownership, which is our focus here. But as you'd expect from a modern mid-sized LCV in this class, there are other body style variants, primarily a chassis cab option and a more car-like people carrying derivative, the Vivaro Life. What else? Uh, well, we haven't yet mentioned the double cab version of this model, which has a second seating row, enabling this Vauxhall to take a total of six crew members. Time to look at this cargo area in a little more detail. Now here we have the standard L1 body shape, which offers a 5.3 cubic meter cargo capacity. Uh, that's 0.1 of a cubic meter more than the previous generation model and 2,512 mils of floor length. That's uh, 25 mils less than before. Go for the length here, L2 body style, and you're looking at 6.1 cubic meters. Again, 0.1 of a cubic meter more than the previous generation model and 2,862 mils of floor length. Uh, and that is a significant 75 millimeters less than before. Don't make a decision between these two body shapes though until you've taken into account the potential extra capacity that can be freed up by the optional flex cargo load through bulkhead. Now this is a standard inclusion provided you avoid the cheaper addition and dynamic trim levels and whichever body style uh, that you choose, it can add a useful 1,162 mils to the overall length and 0.5 of a cubic meter to the overall carriage capacity. So we've established that this Vivaro is a very practical proposition, but what about its running costs? Claimed by Vauxhall to be very difficult to beat in this class. Well, you'd expect this model's relatively light weight and its efficient PSA group sourced Euro 6D Temp 6.2 series engines to pay dividends here, and that is how it pans out. Uh, the brand is claiming CO2 emissions enhancements of between 16 and 19 percent across the range and an economy improvement of between 20 and 28 percent. So significant gains, in other words. Think in terms of this Mark III Vivaro putting out around 30 grams per kilometre less CO2 and going 13 to 17 miles further on each gallon of expensive derv. In a medium range market where there really isn't that much to choose between the very best panel vans, uh, buying decisions often come down to very small differences. If you have an LCV brand, the more of these that you can build into your product, the better placed it'll be. And on that basis, this third generation Vivaro is very well placed indeed. Of course, uh, potential Vivaro customers convinced by Vauxhall's proposition will have to remember that in a rival Peugeot Expert, Citroen Dispatch or Toyota Proace, they could have pretty much exactly the same product with a different badge. It's at this point, though, that the power of Vauxhall's huge UK dealer network might well sway the decision this Luton brand's way. That and the fact that in buying this vehicle, you're supporting its British build. It's another small but significant difference, you see. But maybe, perhaps, in this case, it's a crucial one.